Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Holy Father, at the appointed time you sent us your only begotten Son. Through his death and resurrection he gave us life and poured the Holy Spirit out upon us. The Spirit of adoption through whom we call you our Father. With joy and holiness make us worthy to celebrate this Pentecost Sunday, the feast of the descent of your Holy Spirit upon the pure disciples in the upper room. And we thank you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who has no beginning, and who is the origin of all fatherhood in heaven and upon the earth. And to his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Word, the wisdom, and the might of the Father, and to the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and from the Son, the source of divine gifts, the living one who gives life to all. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. God, the Spirit, the Paraclete, in former times you spoke through the prophets, and in latter times through the holy apostles. You sanctify churches and make perfect the divine services. You confer the priesthood and you complete baptism. You exalt the holy mysteries and you forgive sins. You are the Spirit who delves into the depths of the Father, the Spirit who makes us children of God, the Spirit of truth, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and fear of the Lord. Now, O Holy Spirit, we implore you with the fragrance of this incense and ask you to renew your gifts in us. Descend upon us as you once descended upon the holy apostles in the upper room. <clears throat> Fill us with the wisdom of your teachings. Make us temples worthy of your dignity and quench our thirst with your grace. Enrich us with the knowledge of your holy mysteries. Illumine us with all your light. May we live for you and worship you with purity and with holiness. We raise glory to you and through you to the Father who is hidden and to the Son who is adored now and forever.
O Holy Spirit, God the Consoler, you descended in the form of tongues of fire upon the holy apostles and filled them with divine gifts. Accept our incense and in your grace fill us with strength, wisdom, and holiness. Show us the riches of your heavenly gifts that you bestow on each one of us according to our worthiness. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forever. I'm sorry, I will apologize publicly. I screwed you up on that. I'm very sorry. We'll do it again. God this day sent his spirit who came to the upper room. Joel the prophet had seen him who had come in tongues of fire. Lord, you accepted what the just had offered you. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, when the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, 
because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in their amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. They were all astounded and bewildered and said to one another, what does this mean? But others said, scoffing, they have had too much new wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed to them, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. These people are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. It will come to pass in the last days, God says, that I will pour out a portion of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Indeed, upon my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out a portion of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will work wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and a cloud of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and splendid day of the Lord. And it shall be that everyone shall be saved who calls on the name of the Lord. Praise be to God always. Of the Holy Land, to the praise, glory, and honor of the Master of the Trinity. We burn this incense. Kyrie eleison. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Lord Jesus says, If you love me, you shall keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because it remains with you, and he shall be with you, in you. I will not leave you orphans, and I shall come to you. In a little while, the world 
shall no longer see me, but you shall see me because I live and you shall live. And on that day you shall realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. This is the truth, peace be with you. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So this Feast of Pentecost, of course, is the greatest holiday of the year, second only to Easter, to the resurrection. Because what it is, as in the resurrection of our Lord, his physical nature is transfigured into the life of eternal glory. So there is a parallel and an extension, not just a parallel, but an extension of that glory in his body on earth, which is the church. In the same way on the glorious morning of the resurrection, our Lord appeared triumphant and victorious over death and over sin and over the devil. So on the day of Pentecost, which had been commemorated for centuries of the moment of law being given to Moses on Mount Sinai, which is why there's so many people in the, the epistle today, Elamites, Assyrians, all these terms, because they've all come as pilgrims for the Feast of Pentecost. So what happens on this day is what the, what the law was on Mount Sinai, which was only a type and a preparation for the law of God, which is to be engraved on the hearts of men, within us, internally, transfiguring, illuminating us, that's what takes place on the same morning, on this 50th day, which is all that Pentecost means is 50th. So that reality is shifted then from Mount Sinai and the law that was carved on stones to the law of the gospel, which is carved on human hearts, to those who can see and those who can receive him. And so there's a whole aspect of this transformation. So it really is the epiphany of Christ in time that we call the church. But remember, epiphany is the Greek word for manifestation. If you remember in the Syriac tradition, of course, we call the epiphany denho. Denho, we, we translate it as epiphany, but the word literally means rising, like dawn. And so it has that sense of being made manifest, like the rising sun. But it is so much more beautiful when we speak about the denho of the church being Pentecost. It is the moment that she begins to rise and be manifested to the world. And it continues until the day of judgment, gathering in individuals into the spirit of holiness, into the spirit of truth, until the day of the full manifestation of our Lord's glory, which will end time. So we call it the last day. Which is why if you look in the bulletin, you see the prophet Joel that's being quoted by Simon Peter. He is quoting it. It's about the, what Joel is talking about is about the end of the world. The moon will be dark and the sun will turn to blood. There will be fire and vapors and smoke. This is cataclysmic. But St. Peter already says, this is the fulfillment that you see this day. The rushing wind, the language is being spoken tongue on tongue in the Syriac, which you have in the bulletin. I put things in italics to show you some of the more unique aspects of the Peshitta tradition when we write them. And so what St. Peter is doing is this juxtaposition is our Lord's day of glory, his resurrection, human nature being triumphant, our Lord being transfigured and elevated in his ascension, then the denho, the rising, the epiphany, the manifestation of the body of Christ, which is the church, continuing simultaneously telescoped, juxtaposed with the day of judgment. And we live in one moment 
for a few decades in that whole chain of events. And when our Lord says in the Last Supper in the Gospel today, that I give you the spirit of truth, my Father will give you someone who is your advocate, the Parakletos, the one who will be by your side to strengthen you. In other words, to get us along in fidelity within that fire and that illumination for us to move forward to the day of judgment, our own judgment, the moment we die, and of course, the judgment of the entire universe of creation. So it's quite a vision, which is why when we speak about spirit, and we've talked about this when St. Paul uses the terminology that each human being is body, soul, and spirit, tripartite, threefold. And somebody asked me the question later recently saying, well, I don't understand exactly what this is supposed to mean. And the first thing we have to wipe out of our minds is it's not meaning about three things. There's only one thing, the human being. But there are three aspects, three parts, which is the body, which is the easiest for to understand because we see it, we lug it around. It gives us indigestion on times. We, at that part, we easily comprehend. Soul, soul is the principle of animation from within. It makes us move and live. And in that, we have that in company with bunny rabbits and trees. They all have a principle of animation. They're all alive. But their principle of animation is just as material as their existence. It's completely immaterial. But in the human being, that principle of animation is immaterial. It is spirit. And it's that spirit aspect which allows us to have that contact with the hidden spirit of holiness. It's why every human being, even just speaking naturally, without the faith, baptism, anything, grace, every human being, because of that immaterial aspect of their existence, already has a transcendent dignity. You know, these days we change words all the time. We've mutated from social distancing, now it's physical distancing. Because we're not socially distanced, we're all hunkered and hiding, hiding in our basements together, separately. So you can't say social distance, socially distance, because socially we're all supposed to be somehow in solidarity. All right, we are, we're all suffering the same thing. And it's the same way when these words term. Now we're always talking about herd immunity. Human beings are not a herd. We are animals, yes, we share that from that point, but we are not just animals. We are also spirit. And that is what gives everyone, from the baby from its conception throughout its life, every human being, no matter how handicapped, how gifted or ungifted it may be, that individual has the ability to transcend all of creation and to touch to the divine. That's its capacity. So spirit is a very important aspect, which is why you have that beautiful phrase of our Lord, I will not leave you orphans. You are not on your own in accomplishing this. I am with you, and I am coming to you. So that manifestation on Pentecost is the appearance of our Lord, gathering his apostles in that spirit of truth and taking us forward. The other thing that we'll finish with is we're going to do a ceremony, and it's always beautiful to see you all throughout these weeks, but you're getting heavy doses into tutorials into what is the Syriac tradition. We are going to do a ceremony just before you receive Holy Communion. So the Mass will continue as usual with the anaphora. And once the priest has received communion, the divine mysteries are covered on the altar. And just before we receive in the divine mysteries our Lord sacramentally, we do what is called the rite or the ceremony of kneeling, a rite of adoration. And we're going to do something where we're going to, there'll be, prayers will be called out and we're going to first kneel on our left knee, and you stay there for rather long prayers. So, you know, brace yourself well against the pew. And then we're going to stand and there'll be a finishing prayer, and then we're going to, then we're going to genuflect on our right knee. And then there's another prayer, and then there's another, and then we stand again, and then we're going to kneel on both knees. The reason, when you first see it, if you don't know what we're doing, it looks very bizarre. And plus, since we never kneel, everyone falls over because he doesn't know how to even balance myself anymore on my knees. So, why do we do this? 
One of the things that we have forgotten is that throughout the entire Easter season, in the Council of Nicaea in the year 325, one of the canons, canon 20 to be precise, so directives, moral directives from the council, like we had Vatican II recently, well, Nicaea was back in the beginning of the fourth century. And one of the principles was that it was not fitting for us to kneel on Sundays and so they're just reiterating a well, practice which is older than the Council of Nicaea, that Sunday is the day of the resurrection and the entire Pentecost, the entire 50 days of the Paschal season, kneeling is unfitting. Kneeling should not be done because we stand, come, we rise up. In fact, you have it as part of this prayer, by the power of God, stand, rise now, and we get up from our knees. So this whole notion of the why we stand. And in the Latin tradition, there's one trace left of that ancient canon. Because of course, everyone knows we kneel all the time during the Latin masses, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it doesn't matter. We just kneel a large part of it. And, and of course, kneeling is perfectly correct and legitimate in the way that we pray. But we forget the ancient tradition that we stand for the resurrection. We stand during the season. So when we come to the 50th day, this was a ceremony normally in the evening. They just moved it back down to the liturgy, to the mass, in which we initiate now back to our normal manner of prayer that we will kneel for these things. And as I've mentioned, in the Latin tradition, there is still one trace left of this. And so for those of you who recite the Angelus throughout the year, during the Paschal season, we recite the Regina Celi. And the Regina Celi is a little bit shorter. It's still in honor of the Mother of God. It's in honor of the resurrection. But the rubric, the way that that prayer is meant to be recited is standing. The Angelus you would kneel for, genuflect for. But the Regina Celi you stand. And of course, the Regina Celi finishes with this 50th day. So there is still even a little trace in the Latin tradition left. So that's why we'll have this ceremony. Then we will have the blessing of water. There'll be an aspersion up one side and then down the other because it reminds us of our baptism because, because Pentecost is one of the three main days from the apostolic era for baptism. Epiphany, resurrection, Pentecost, these three days. So there'll be an aspersion of water. Once you're done at the end of the liturgy, you can also, we have a number of bottles here. If you'd like to take some of the water with you back home, you are welcome to do it. And of course, as we remind everyone, please keep your six feet of, not social, but physical distancing, whether it's communion, getting your bottle, but you know the routine. And so we look to this inner dwelling, this reality, even in our nature of spirit, which opens us up to God. And we ask that on this day with fire and illumination, you have a long explanation of the Syriac vision of the transformation of the spiritual life in the bulletin this week. But that we ask God that this fire descend upon us, that this light transform us and open us to that profound spirit of truth who can illuminate, inflame us, and move us forward in this pathway of the gospel. And then we can heal the words of consolation from our Lord. I will not leave you orphans. You are not alone. And I am coming to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We will continue with the profession of our faith on page 748, 748. We believe in one God.
Tell what my dead head aloho, while what I loho dam harit ayut. I never said what I would talk, I will not buy talk my school and fire flow. What good a show. Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Tecla. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those from the sacrifices offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
We continue with the anaphora of St. James, brother of the Lord, on page 794. 794. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation. Purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in the bond of love and peace, through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, may we give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. To God. I know you know it. Merciful Lord, you dwell on high and look down upon the earth. Through the grace of your only Son, send your blessings upon those who bow before your holy altar. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, in your love for all people, you sent your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. Do not turn your face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and bloodless sacrifice. Relying on your mercy and through the grace of your only Son, we ask, that, we, ask, we ask that this holy mystery instituted for our salvation not be for our condemnation. Rather, may it blot out all our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks. For your goodness, we glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly it is right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, adore you, and give you thanks, O maker of all things visible and invisible. The highest heavens and all its powers praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them. The heavenly Jerusalem in the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. The angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts sing, praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, with never-ending voices and with sweet acclamations. They cry out and they proclaim.
Father, King of ages and giver of all holiness. Holy is your Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit, who delves into all things, even into the depths of God. You are holy and almighty, the Creator and the Good One. You formed us from the dust of the earth and gave us the joys of paradise. When we had transgressed your commandment and fell, you did not abandon us, but like a good and merciful Father, you instructed us. Through the law you called out to us, through the prophets you guided us, and at the appointed time you sent your only Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, into the world to renew your image. He came down and by the Holy Spirit became flesh of the holy and ever-Virgin Mary and dwelt among us, accomplishing all things for our salvation. And Sabe Lachma bin Al Kodi Shanto, O Barahu Kodesh, Waksu Ya Bilitalami Dao Kodo Moro, Sabahola Mehene Kulho, Hono Denita. Ahrodil, Bachlo Faikun, Wachlof Sagie, Metapaseo Metihem, Hosuyon, Haume, Wahoyen, and Alam, Alamin. Kanno alko so damsi ho men hamro ho men mayo barahu kadesh ho ya bel talmi dao kado mara sab istaw mehne kul ho ho no deni ta dema ho dilan dia tiki khadato. Dachlo faikun, wachlo sagie, mete shadu meti hemb. Hosunyon, how me wa hoyen an alam alamin. in memory of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection until I come again. your ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your glorious second coming when you shall judge the world with justice and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, cleanse us of all our sins. We, your people, and your inheritance implore you, and through you, and with you, implore your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them, and because of them, Oh, 
sense he may make the spread a life-giving body a saving body a heavenly body a body that redeems our souls and bodies the body of our lord god and savior jesus christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it Amen. and make the mixture in this chalice the blood of the new covenant life-giving blood a saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies. The blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded on the rock of faith, so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time, now and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of your holy church throughout the world and for the holy places that you have glorified by the presence of Christ your Son, especially for holy Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Remember our pure bishops who spread the word of truth, especially our blessed fathers, Francis the Pope of Rome, Bashara Peter, our patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, and all the orders of the church and those who serve her. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, our parents and all our and all our brothers and sisters, those who are here praying with us, those who are not here, and those who have who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. Remember those who have presented offerings upon your holy altar those for whom they have been offered, those who have desired to make an offering but were unable, those whom we have remembered and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation and accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and clothe them in your fear that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, St. John the Forerunner, St. Stephen the Archdeacon and the First Martyr, St. James the Brother of the Lord, St. Joseph, St. Mirren, and all the saints in your grace, count, count us among them in the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teachings in our souls. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, the faithful departed who have died in the true faith. Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant 
us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you have sanctified the offerings and the gifts presented to you and have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us now, so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, God of heaven, praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come now, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from the evil. <coughs> the kingdom of power. Yes, O Lord our God, lead us not into temptation that we do not have the strength to endure. But when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, and we glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. O Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy and his love for all people, you are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. He continues to be one God and Father for all ages and forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified. And our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for your blood. O Lord our God, to you be glory
Father. 
And again, we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, O God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and in righteousness. With the saints, we may attain the share in your heavenly reward through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Jesus, our Lord, bless us, protect us, guide us on the path of life. Favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to the living and bless them with hope through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and all the saints now and forever. Amen. So just a reminder now with our protocols, if you wish to visit, please visit outside. If you want to stay and pray, you're welcome to stay in the pews. And again, the bottles are there for those who might wish to take holy water with them. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.